Welcome to this BEC podcast. My name is Rasmus Beck and today I invited a coach who know how to handle the best, Jonas Ludok from Denmark, but also coaching for the Netherlands. Welcome. Thank you. Jonas, um, we have been knowing each other for years now. I have seen you coaching on club level, on national level, and now I see you work with some of the absolute best players in, in Europe. As a coach working with players on different levels, what are the most significant skill you should actually bring as a coach? Um, for first of all, I think that that uh, have a, a good <laughs> knowledge about the game, of course, is important. But I would say that um, from my experience, that that uh, to cr- create a good uh, relation between the coach and uh, a player. So uh, I find it's 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 difficult to to. Uh, Get on the same page in coaching situations and training if you if you don't build some kind of good relation and uh, by relation I mean that that you that you can both be hard on the player but you can also joke around a little bit and uh, talk about other stuff. I mean for me that's that's a very important thing. Um, I feel like when I get that aspects in with the player, I also get my my badminton knowledge more into the player. Mm. So that's the the short answer. That's the short <laughs> answer. Uh, Jonas, you're wearing the orange colors of Holland, yeah. uh, or the Netherlands, and you are wearing the flag as well, but you're Danish, you're living in Denmark, but you're coaching in, in the Net- coaching yeah. the Dutch players. What is this thing, actually? Because for somebody it might seem quite strange. <coughs> yeah, I, um, I, uh, three years ago I, I, I moved to the Netherlands, where I, uh, with the back <coughs> then uh, technical director Klaus Poulsen, hired me as uh, assistant national coach. Um, so I've been living in Netherlands for three years, where my responsibility was uh, mainly for the single group, both the uh, ladies singles and men singles. Then uh, I decided uh, in April that I wanted to 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 stop uh, because I I felt that I I missed home and uh, and the stuff I had in Denmark. And then they asked me if I wanted to continue uh, with the men's singles uh, until the Olympics. That's of course is mainly Mark Kaljau, but also Johan Kvigl. Um, and I accepted that. So um, the guys are in Netherlands, uh, sorry, in Denmark a lot, and train with me. Where I build a training group also with some Danish players and some foreign players who play plays in Denmark. So that's the story behind that. And um, yeah, it's working fine so far. I mean, we had a good training in uh, in Denmark, but uh, it's different from when we were based in the Netherlands. As um, and, and work there at the center every on a, on a daily basis. So here it's a little bit when the guys are out on tournaments. I don't travel to all the tournaments, then they come back and train with me. So that's pretty much the deal at the moment. If we start to look at the practice part, then we can talk about the coaching and, and yeah. traveling part afterwards. If you look at, for instance, Mark Kallio, mm. he told us in this podcast actually that he's very happy with the work that you guys are actually doing. Yeah. Um, <coughs> have you seen Mark increase his level in the past one, two years, is that a main reason for you to actually continue working with him or what is the reason behind still working towards the Olympics? Yeah, I, I think like uh, um, I started working with uh, Mark in December uh, 2016 because I was with the doubles in the beginning. <coughs> um, and yeah, I, I think we, we have improved a lot. Uh, I mean, he has some good results over the past years. Um, and I, I, of course, think he can he can do a lot of things better. <laughs> I've also told him. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of things that can be improved. Uh, so, of course, I would like to continue that um, that road and that work with him. Um, I also think that for Mark, it's a big goal to reach the Olympics. So, uh, what I felt most bad about uh, when I said I wanted to stop was actually. I felt I left him a little bit alone in the in the period wh- that's maybe the most important of his career. But some si- times, as a coach, you also need to think a little bit about yourself. So, um, so I, I I think that he has improved a lot, and 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 I can see him still develop. I think we have a good relation. I'd like I t- talk about with Mark, I, I can joke with him, I can be hard with him, and I can tell things honest. And that was also the main main reason why I wanted to continue. That I felt that that we still have something to offer for each other. Mm. And when you then look at uh, Joran, mm. how, how far can he actually take? We have seen Mark 
taking it to challenge level, Super 100 level, Super 300 level, where he's actually quite competitive. Uh, what about Jorn? Yeah, um, <coughs> I, I, I I see Jorn has uh, the, the same potential as Mark. <laughs> um, they are different players, uh, different uh, uh, s uh, plays in their careers. Uh, Johan struggled with some injuries after he, his juniors. He got a medal at the junior uh, Europeans the year I started. Uh, extremely hard worker, has also decided to dedicate a lot of time to be in Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, has a lot of has a lot to learn and is, is still uh, a year or two away from could where Mark was when I started. So he still needs a lot of training, a lot of knowledge. He's very eager to learn. So uh, um, for that part, I mean, it's always difficult to, to predict what what level can he reach. But uh, in the daily training and and also in the results he's making slowly, I, I, I see that he he can he can go up and be a, a top player in Europe for sure. Mm. Now you say that you, the the plan is to work towards the Olympics. Mm. What what after? Um, I, I I don't <coughs> know really. Um, it's a uh, it's a question I've been asked before. I mean, the Netherlands uh, asked me if I want to continue to the Olympics, and I accepted that. And and at this moment, uh, of course, the the goal is to qualify Mark, and is to develop Johan as much as possible in on on this road also. So mm -hmm. so it's not only about Mark. Johan is also important, but that's the main thing. Um, I assume the Netherlands at some point also would like to have uh, the setup back at the in Arnhem at Papendal. Mm. Um, but yeah, I would like to continue to work with them if, if, uh, if that's the case. It's not that I don't want to, to keep working with them, but uh, I don't know what their plans is. And I, I just think right now I'm, I'm just happy that I have the chance to follow it all the way to the Olympics. Mm. If we look at the Dutch single group, uh, you're on Mark living in Denmark, mm. practicing mainly with you, Gail Mehulet, living on Center of Excellence, Battle mm. to Europe, Center of Excellence in Denmark, Sarai Davis Eibergen, living basically in Switzerland, also sometimes in, in the Netherlands. Mm. The single group is more or less non-existing in the Dutch Federation at the moment. Yeah. What's the reason behind that? Um, yeah, the, the latest singles group is, uh, of course, so I decided to move to Switzerland. So for a year <laughs> and a half, actually, uh, uh, or a, a year actually, uh, while I was still there, uh, Gail was the only lady singer there. Mm. I think the thing there are some young uh, girls who's coming up and has potential, but again, as as the process I talk about with Johan, we mm. are we are three, four, maybe five years away from that. So uh, it's uh, it's th th there would be a gap for that, and that's also where what what, the, what Gail's uh, option was to go out and train elsewhere. Of course, she can also stay in the Netherlands and train with the young girls, but the the gap at the moment is 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 a little bit too big. Um, and with the men's singles, we also have uh, we also have some some few young guys who has the potential also. But I think a little bit um, from a player's perspective, you want to get the most out of us also when you are and in your prime of your career. Mm -hmm. And so say let I, I I think that the players maybe are not at a stage now where they just want to go back and give back. They also want to try to maximize the potential, mm. and that's the thought behind it. And uh, and I think with the men's singles, the conclusion was that that for the short period here for the Olympics, this is the best setup we could provide them mm. by going to Denmark. And and even though I think that the setup in in Arnhem in Papendal was good, I still think that that we we have a little bit more options in Denmark mm. now than we had <coughs> back then. Mm. And same, I, as far as I hear it, same goes for Gail, actually. Yeah. It's the right choice for her to, to practice at Center of Excellence compared to, to staying back home in the Netherlands. Yeah, um, I mean, we had a lot of talks with Gail, but I was also there. And I think also Gail is at a stage in, in her career where she wants to get the maximize out mm -hmm. of it. Uh, the young girls is, is good and training fine, but uh, I think also she needed a little bit change of environment mm. uh, that that's that's my perspective on it mm. uh, uh, to try to see if she can take the next uh, step also so I think it was a good choice for her <coughs> and and um, it's it's like I said earlier also I, I think the overall goal should always be to to try to create the the best possible training setup mm -hmm. uh, in your own country at the moment in the Netherlands uh, for the lacing and the men's singles at least for this year it's 
it's more suitable to, mm. to bring it to Denmark, mm. I think. If we look back, we find recently, uh, we find Eric Pang, who's been doing well mm. for the Netherlands. We, have found we find Judith Mondikes, who also did well in women's singles. Mm. From those two and on till now, there's been a gap. Mm. It seems like it's a bit hard for, for the Netherlands to produce that unique talent who actually aims for a medal. Maybe not aims, but, but at least fight for that medal in the last stage. For mm -hmm. instance, we saw Mark bow out, I think it was in the quarterfinal at the European Games uh, mm -hmm. in 2019. Gail and Soraya also struggling with making it to the last four or last eight. Mm -hmm. What's the reason that it's actually so hard for the Netherlands, who actually has a quite good badminton culture, to, mm -hmm. to make that step further? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's... it's uh, it's 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 a little bit difficult <coughs> to answer exactly what's the reason is. Uh, my experience is that it's it's a it's a good system uh, that's working hard. I also have a, a relatively good structure. Sometimes you also uh, you you need some talent also, of course. Um, but uh, there's no doubt that that uh, they they have to do uh, they have to be even more ambitious at the earliest stage. Mm -hmm. To uh, to to bring the the players up, give them the skills uh, set, so they can compete at the highest level. And I think uh, now you you say Eric is actually my my age group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think some of these players you can also take Diki, for example, mm -hmm. uh, very skillful players in the youth. Uh, you did also very good in the youth. So um, I have not been uh in the sis uh, in in the down in the system enough to say exactly what it is but I, I think the netherlands is is producing over time quite a lot of talent but they need to to keep doing that they need to keep working hard with all the the, the talents that are actually coming out of the the clubs mm. and uh and and see if they can develop it further mm. when i look at for instance at at, at gail and soraya uh i do not expect them to beat for instance carlina marin no when i see mark Calu, I don't expect him to beat players like Victor Axelsen or Anders Antonsen, but I know that on a very good day of Mark, and maybe not that good day of Anders and Victor, mm. it might actually be a close close call. Mm. When I look at the doubles then, I expect Lean, uh, Selena and Robin actually to maybe even be the favorite to win a European championship. Mm. Why is it easier? Don't misunderstand me. Noth nothing is easy in this sport. But why is it easier for the for for the doubles categories? Because we saw the same with Jaco and Celine, a very very decent pair. We have also seen the men's doubles actually doing quite good. So so with the women's doubles. Um, yeah, but um, <laughs> I I think also that it's it's a little bit the same if you see in Denmark. Sometimes you catch. Uh, uh, some years where you just have more talent than others and mm. the, and the and the group with Jaco and Selena and and Jelle and La La Robin coming mm. up who and he's still within an age where he can he can uh, be in his prime mm. hopefully he has many years ago as the same as Selena <coughs> so so you're catching some players who are actually developing a lot mm. uh, at the same uh, time uh, Jaku played with Selena for a period. Robin is taking over. Selena has been producing at a very high level for many years. Um, so, so I, 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 I don't know if I, I think it has a little bit to do with luck mm -hmm. that they had a very strong group back mm -hmm. then. I also think they were the ones who actually challenged the Danes the most uh, in the youth. So, um, I, I, I don't I don't think there's there's any specific reason why it, it happened. It's just that you you are lucky to have a lot of talent in the same uh, age areas, and that has produced the Afi and Selena uh, qualifying at the Olympics. And we have been very also when I started, uh, Robin was still relatively young, so I've also seen him develop for three years. Mm. Um, so sometimes things just click at the right ages, and now we have a, a mixed double where they complement each other and and they have a potential to go even further. Mm. So um, that that might be some of the reason that we have been lucky in the Netherlands to have some talent who was good at the same mm. time. If we look uh, beyond uh, Tokyo 2020 and, and looking further for, for instance, parent 2024 or even further, then are you are you positive or are you concerned for, for the badminton in the Netherlands? 
Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive. I mean, um, we mentioned a little bit about the, the talent thing where I say, I, I think Netherlands is producing a lot of good badminton players. Mm. I think in the ladies doubles category with uh, Deborah, Jelle, Elisa, uh, Imke, who's injured at the moment, uh, we might have the biggest talent group in Europe, mm. uh, ladies double wise <coughs> and mixed double player wise. Selena still hopefully can go another cycle. So I'm, I'm pretty positive also. Uh, you see Robin, Ruben, still Mark and Johan can go for many years. But mm. the thing is you cannot rest on this. I mean, you have to use this as a building block, as a motivating to say. Um, also, the training environment, the, the thing also, when, when I started in the Netherlands with Mark and Johan, I tried also to create uh, a training environment with the men's singles, and I, I also say then it's, it's your job one day to pass this knowledge on, mm. to say this is how we train here, because it, the thing we do in, in everyday practice is the one who's also going to reflect the level we're going to have in the future. So to answer your, your question, if we can keep all the good vibes going that we have now, uh, the good training environment that's in the doubles, if we can keep that giving this uh, knowledge further on and further on to the new generation, then I'm positive. So I think we have an opportunity in the Netherlands now to, to really create a good culture for training because we have a lot of good players in, in different categories who has actually world-class potential. The European uh, Men's and Women's Team Championship is coming soon. Um, what should we expect from the Netherlands uh, in uh, Levant, France? Uh, you're talking about Thomas and Yubaka? Qualification. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the little bit uh, easy answer for me is to say that uh, I may not be the one who decides <laughs> what the goal is. Uh, it's probably going to be Ruth uh, back home in the Netherlands. Uh, I think we actually have some strong teams. Uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the ladies, uh, the ladies actually can produce uh, two very good ladies doubles. We can also produce three decent ladies singles. Um, so, and for the men's uh, part, we actually have uh, three very okay men's singles. We we still have a Nick Fransman who uh, who's training with us in the Netherlands, so uh, you never know actually. So if if we feel a team, I I definitely think we can qualify both. Mm. If you look at at the teams and the names, a medal at the European Championships for 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 men's teams and women's teams is is that actually an option here, or or is that too far to go? I, I personally think the men's team is the second best behind uh, Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, the ladies is a little <coughs> bit more difficult uh, to say, but we have two very good ladies doubles. That's always a good start. And and you see also with both Gail and Soai, they, c they have a level where they can win a match against somebody. So uh, so the men's definitely have a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the ladies uh, is, is, I will call it a, a dark horse <laughs> mm -hmm. for a medal. Um, but the men's has probably a better chance mm. than the ladies mm. has. Mm. We saw at the European Mixed Team Championships in Copenhagen 2019 that it was actually a very young group of Dutch players mm. going. Um, does that actually give something to that upcoming championships that we saw the young players also got time on court? Um, or doesn't it matter at all actually? Sorry, if, if they will have playing time, the young players? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it will be young. Also, if you say, for example, right now it's, uh, it's uh, Deborah and Imke is our second uh, best ladies double. They're very young. And the, the one who should, will play the last ladies singles, she'll be very young. So mm -hmm. it, it, will be the, it will be young players coming mm -hmm. in. And uh, this is also a, 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 an area where Johan, for example, will have a quite important role mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to win a medal. So we're not going to pull out any old players. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you're thinking, that I don't think so. So, uh, yeah, and and I think the Netherlands is like if you you, you say we have uh, the, the like Jelle and Selena, the oldest one, and they're not mm -hmm. even even thirty yet. Uh, so it is a young squad, and, th and this is why it has been quite fun to work with because mm -hmm. it's it's not old players past their prime. It's young players who has still a lot of l left in the tank to develop and wants to develop. Uh, so. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be young for the Netherlands, mm. I'm mm. sure. We also have European Championships, of course, in 2020. Mm. It's been a while since we have seen uh, a Dutch player taking uh, more than just one medal 
mm. uh, especially in the singles category, which is actually your area. Will we see a Dutch player getting a European Championship medal in singles in 2020? Um, I would say yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, I truly believe that, uh, that, that Mark has the potential to get a medal. Um, I, I respect a lot of the European players and uh, I al also tell him that a lot, that there's a lot of these players that, that is extremely good and difficult to beat. Uh, at the moment I see uh, Anas and Victor as the one who's uh, untouchable, mm -hmm. <laughs> not unbeatable, but uh, of course, but, but the one where you say you will need, as you mentioned, an extremely good day mm. uh, or, or maybe not so good day for them to beat them. The rest, I think, he has a fair chance against. Mm. I would like his chances against all of them mm. on any day. Jonas, I think that should be the final word. Let's see if Mark gets that medal. Yeah. And a good luck to you both, to all of you, to, to qualify as many Dutch as possible, for sure, for, for the Olympics. It's going to be interesting. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching this podcast provided by Badminton Europe.